Howdy folks, it's your friend Dominic. I'm gonna go take advantage of some big bluegills hanging out up towards shore and I figured this would be a fantastic opportunity to take you along with me and show you the basics of bluegill fishing. Come along with me, let's check it out. So like millions of other anglers across the world, I started bluegill fishing and that opened the door for my love and passion of catching anything that swims. And I think it hit home just right. When you're younger, you can just go off the end of the dock and kind of mess around and catch bluegills. And when you're an adult, hey, it's still a lot of fun to do so too. I use a five foot six ultralight Berkeley Cherrywood rod for what it is. You know, this is a nice bluegill rod, trout rod, a small trout that is, a crappie, perch, bluegill. I really like it for what it is. And just for bluegill fishing, you don't need to have super fancy equipment. This is one of my ice fishing reels, and I just have it spooled up with some six pound basic monofilament on the reel here. You know, you don't really need a whole lot of line on here, you know, for when you're casting, you know, little distances off of the dock. And especially with smaller reels like this, they tend to wind knot much more often with the small diameter lines that you're using when you're pan fishing. So this is this is just a six pound mono. You know, eight's kind of big, four's a little too small. I like six for what it is. And then what you need is a bobber of your choice. I like these weighted bobbers that look like teardrops. They sit up nice, nice and high in the water. It tells me exactly when I've got something packering at it and when I've got something pulling down. And then going down to my hook, this is a size six long shank J hook. Specifically when you're bluegill fishing, you want an Aberdeen hook. And if possible, you want your hook to be as in line as possible because bluegills have really small mouths. They're almost like beaks when you look at them. They like to peck at the bait. And I found that if you're fishing with a Carlisle hook, one of my favorite hooks for perch and crappie fishing, you know, they have a very offset tip to them. And with bluegills, you don't get the hookup. So you want to make sure you want to have an inline long shank Aberdeen hook, something similar to this one right here. And if, if you're fishing not super deep, there's no real need for a split shot, I feel. Uh, most of the time when you're casting, it seems like the bluegills are on it when the bait is falling down. Uh, but, well, let's give it a shot. I'll show you what else we got going on today. Here. Yeah, we just got some basic night crawlers here. What I'm gonna do is take my hook and I've got a little piece of worm that I ripped off and I'm just gonna hook that worm once and then pick it up again and then hook it twice so it looks just like that. And since I'm only fishing in a few feet of water, oh, hey, a pike just came through. That's pretty cool. Let me see if you can see that. He's gone. There's a nice little weed bed up in here. What if the pike are hanging out? Hey, not a giant, but there's one for you. It's good for the soul to come down here and do this. It's that easy. This is all you need when you just want to take the kids fishing and you want to go catch the bluegills at the end of the dock that you can find in a lot of your local rivers and ponds and lakes. Now I know a lot of people who might be watching this are might be new to fishing in general or they don't bluegill fish a whole lot. You got to be very careful with them because their fins are quite sharp and I don't want you to get poked and potentially infected. So you can catch bluegills like this off of docks just about year round. Once it gets warm enough in the springtime, the fish will, the fish will start moving on in. But throughout the summer months, only the smaller fish are going to be sticking around shallow. So if you're going out trying to catch, you know, catfish bait, for example, you know, that's a great place to look around the docks. If you want to catch really big panfish, they migrate out into the deeper water in the summertime. But during the spring and fall months, you got a real good shot at catching a real big panfish this time of year. You know, they're they're on the feed bag too. 
they know the winter's coming. And to throw them a curveball sometimes, if you see the, the larger guys cruising out there, throw a bigger piece of worm on. You know, bluegill fishing, especially pan fishing or just fishing in general, it's about making small changes and seeing what they can do for you. Sometimes you make that small little, little difference and they go wild for it, you know. The, the size of your bait, there's one. The size of your bait, the distance between your float and your hook, you know, sometimes covering the hook point is very important. It's it's fishing for you, but stay on your toes when you're trying to catch panfish like this. That's one thing I'll say, you know, they can be around you, but that doesn't mean you're gonna get them to bite super easily. Sometimes you gotta crack the code. Sometimes you got to cast out a little bit farther. Sometimes, you know, you, you got to totally get offshore. But that's what I like about the fall. You don't have to, to go too far. This is, you know, the dock I grew up fishing when I was younger. And, you know, I come here in the summertime to, to get bait and stuff like that. But you don't see too many really big fish. There's one. Look, like you do in the, in the fall months and in the spring months. And, you know, even... Even when I'm ice fishing out here, you, you get the big, you get the big bluegills, early ice. Then they move back out onto the main lake. Put that guy back. Keep that thing out there. Hmm. Just a hook and a piece of worm, all you need. Anybody can learn how to fish. This is how I started fishing. Maybe this is the first fishing video you've ever watched, and you're going to go learn how to fish, and then you'll also like fishing and share a passion for the outdoors like I do. Well, it's pretty clear out here today. We'll just cast it right on up in there and wait for somebody to come through. There's a little pecker gnat. Dropped it. There's, there's one. See, there's... If you're like me, I like catching anything that swims. Bluegills to burbot, to smallmouth bass, to muskie. If it has fins, if it swims, say if it has scales or skin, I'm gonna try to catch it. I'm just gonna toss it right back out there. Just watch the float. So I believe it's really important to use a long shank hook when you're pan fishing like this because I you know I hate seeing hooks go too far into the fish's mouth and if you're not planning on harvesting the fish it can cause you know a lot of damage trying to get it out but when you got that extra long shank you don't have to worry about it so we just have our have our bait rigged up like that we just boom chicka boom it over there and when your bobber's sitting in the water, oftentimes you can tell if it's a big fish or small fish. The smaller juvenile fish will pull that bobber down really violently in, in jerks, but your bigger fish will slowly pull it under and they'll barely make moves on it. So if you see your bobber moving a little bit, you know, it, it pays to just, you know, give it a quick little reel in to set the hook in case something's there. Oh, hey. That's actually a real nice one. You know, my hand for reference size. Hey, look at that. It's all about making small changes, changes, just like I was talking about. I cast it out a little bit further. You know, right around shore here, I'm seeing all sorts of smaller fish. You know, they'd be great cut bait, but if you want to catch the bigger ones, cast a little bit further out. Cast around uh, lily pads. You know, look for stuff they're, they're going to be looking for, too. Oh, here's a nice one. Come back. Woo! Oh, hey. Look at that. A nice, beautiful bluegill. Wowee. That's all you need, folks. Just a long shank Aberdeen hook, piece of worm, a float, you know, a body of water that's got bluegills. You know, they're pretty readily available. And get yourself a nice, you know, ultralight spinning rod. You know, this cherry wood, I'll be sure to leave a link below in the description where you can pick one of these up. And you can get, you know, any any sort of bobber you want that really tickles your fancy. Just make sure you get, you know, 
six pound test monofilament it does the job just fine there's a nice one. Oh, oh, oh yeah and the big ones actually know how to fight too yeah he's disking himself over there oh come back oh look at him Now these are, I've got, I've got, I've got rather large hands. So when you look at these bluegills, these are, these are fantastic specimens. Very nice fish. Very nice fish. Just, just peeked them right, right there. We're just gonna pop that hook out. And he's good to go. Good to live another day. Let's see if I can catch a big, big one. Cause it seems like the bigger ones I live in over here. There's one. There's another bright sunny. Whew. I like sunfish. Nice and pretty. Look at how yellow that belly is. Nice, good, clean looking sunfish. All right, well, I found a pack of them over there. Let's see what's going on. Uh, whoop, lost them. I hope everybody's been doing well lately. Hope you're enjoying the nice fall colors in the background. You know, my home lake is beautiful this time of year. It's beautiful every month out of the year, but I really like these fall months. It is just gorgeous out here. Oh, oh, that was... That looks like a decent fish. There's one. You don't even have to try some days, it seems like. Just catching bluegills, catching bluegills. Like nobody's business. Just... Give it a little cast. Flick it right there. And when it's really sunny, I like watching that night crawler sink further and further into the water and right when it gets to that point you can't seem to see it anymore you'll see a fish come up behind it when the bobber starts to move that's when when i give it the old hook set rooney some guys sometimes these guys are just robbing little thieves you know that's how bluegills can be sometimes So we got going on here, just your basic night crawlers. I'll rip off a piece of this guy. Um, a lot of people ask me if I prefer night crawlers or leaf worms or wax worms. For the most part, night crawlers. I only use wax worms through the ice or when it's very, very cold out and I'm just trying to catch bait fish. But you know, if you get leaf worms and you get wax worms and you're messing around with guys out here, you're just gonna run through bait. With the night crawlers, they last a lot longer and they attract the bigger fish. And you can catch anything with a night crawler. Hey, it's a lot of fun when you catch a bass out here just with the old night crawler and hook under a bobber. Oh yeah, getting bigger. Oh yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Hey, I'm gonna throw you back, just chill. So it's safe to say with catching bluegills, it can be a lot of fun and you don't need a whole lot of stuff to do it. Once again, you just need, you know, a small spinning reel. It could be a big spinning reel. It could be any spinning reel, whatever you're comfortable with. Just get it fitted with six pound line, get yourself a bobber, get yourself, you know, the right hooks, and you'll be good to go.
six pound monofilament berkeley triline xl smooth casting this works really well too you can't go wrong with it that's all you need for bluegill fishing folks and that's where we're gonna wrap up the video today i hope you enjoyed it i hope you like and subscribe i would really appreciate it if you did that maybe leave me a comment below in the future for potential video ideas that i could cover uh there's going to be a lot of ice fishing stuff going on in the near future very excited for that uh, but until next time i'm dominic stay safe on the water bye bye